All right, so you want to sidechain in Renoise? Uh, well, there are multiple ways to do it. So uh, I've got this short loop going here. Wonderful. So I want to sidechain these three tracks, the bass, chords, and melody to the kick, so that whenever the kick hits, uh, the volume of these three goes down and uh, then goes back up. You know, giving the giving it that pumping effect that we want. So, uh, most popular way to do this is probably the signal follower. So we'll type in the signal follower, and here it is. This thing will uh, take audio from the kick and uh, turn it into a signal that it can then route to other devices and such. So we want to affect these three tracks. We want to. Uh, you know, add some sort of fader to them so that this signal follower can affect that fader. We can do that using a send track. So let's apply a gainer to that send track. And actually, let's not use a gainer. Let's instead use this thing which I've made. This is a doofer. Uh, it's very simple. It's just a gainer. Uh, but I've mapped this uh, knob to have uh, 0 dB as its max value. And therefore, uh, it's much easier to uh, make faders and such without going over 0 dB because uh, you can just like mess around with them and uh, you can just, you, you'll just never go above 0 dB, which is very useful. Um, <clears throat> so we'll uh, go to the signal follower, we'll go to the send track, go to the doofer, go to the uh, gain on that doofer. And right now, let's look at the parameters here. Destination minimum and destination max. So right now, when the kick is silent, it will be at the minimum value. And when the kick hits, it'll be at the maximum value. But that's kind of not what we want. We want the vo volume uh, to start from, you know, its default value, and then dip down once the kick hits and rise down, rise up again. So uh, we need to swap these around, basically. <coughs> and uh, now, as you can see, if we go to the doofer here, you can see the fader being affected, and uh, the way we apply it to these tracks, or just to put a send device on them, we make sure that the sidechain uh, send track is selected. I'll just copy that to these. And now, we have sidechain. There are a few parameters here you can mess around with. For example, attack release uh, controls how quickly uh, the attack, how, how quickly the signal, you know, reaches down, and also how quickly it releases after the kick has hit. And uh, we have the sensitivities, which is probably the most important one because it allow, allows you to like set how powerful, uh, you know, it feels once the kick hits. Basically, just makes it much more sensitive. Also, if you're using like a drum loop instead of just a kick, uh, uh, you could also solo out the kick by using this low pass filter. Uh, if you click this button up here, you can hear what the signal follower hears. Uh, you can hear what is being processed. So you you can use that feature to. Uh, single out the kick in a drum loop or something like that. Um, but yeah, but here's the problem. What if we want to sidechain the bass more than the chords and melody? Or maybe we want to sidechain the melody a little less than the chords and bass. Uh, and now that won't really work with the uh, with synth track because it just it takes all the audio from these three tracks and just like compiles it into one big thing that it then does the exact same thing to. So we don't want to use a send track in this situation, so let's just get rid of all this. Instead, we will use the Hydra, which is a device that takes a signal and can send it out to multiple other destinations. And it has a few parameters to mess around with, which we will be using. So let's put uh, this gainer on the bass, the chords and the melody and such. 
and let's route the signal follower into current track hydra and input. So now whenever the kick hits this hydra will have its input lowered. Right? And so we want to route route this input out to multiple outputs. So we take this one, we write it to the base, the doofer, and the gain. Same for the chords and the melody. And now we have the same thing as before. Uh, but now we have a few parameters to tweak for each of the uh, outputs we have. So, for example, for the bass, we could uh, select a different scaling. So instead of it going linearly from bottom to top, it'll go logarithmically, uh, like exponentially. So it'll start slow and then quickly rise up later. And we can use that to make it sound more harsh, a bit like more sidechain. That might be a bit too much, but you get what I mean. Uh, you can also, to, on the melody, you can also, uh, you know, select this thing, which is a little less powerful. And you know, you can adjust your different sidechain levels with this. It's pretty useful. You can also select a different floor value. So if you don't want one of the tracks to be sidechain down di directly to negative infinity b db and just like want to for example like just halfway down there it'll still be sidechain but just not not as much and that can be useful if you're if you don't want the same sidechain to be applied to all three to all of your tracks but here's the uh, here's the plot problem with the signal follower so let's uh, try to mess around with the settings here and you might notice some crackling start to pop up. Now why is that? And that is because this kick is quite long. And so when the signal follower, you know, detects the signal, uh, it will not let, let go of that signal until the entire kick has passed, you know. Uh, and that results in this flickering as it constantly tries to, you know, release the signal, but it just can't because this kick is still going. And to fix that, we could use a ghost instead. So I have a ghost here. Uh, let me just... Alright, so we have this ghost. Uh, which is basically just a... Uh, This is just a glitch perk or something like that. Really short. It's only like a couple oscillations. Uh, and we can use that. We basically just like played at the same time as our kick. And we just muted in the mix. We don't need it. And we don't, we don't need it for the sound. We only need it for the fact that it's really short. So we move all that over to here. And you can hear. You can now see it's very quick. So now you can. You can make it as sensitive and as short of release time as you like, and you won't have any problems like that. So that's a useful technique. But there is another way you could do this, and we just like, we don't need a ghost, we don't uh, need the kick audio or anything. We just need an LFO. And this uh, Arena's LFO is really neat. Uh, if you hit this custom button here down here, you can see it's sort of like just an envelope that you can customize to your heart con heart's consent content. Uh, so we'll be using this uh, as the slope of the of the side chain we want. So if we, if we hit this one shot button, you can see once it reaches the top, it just stops, and it won't trigger again until you hit this reset button. Let's make it quicker. Uh, two to four around that. Uh, so you can see it sort of looks like a sidechain thing now, right? So let's route it into the Hydra, into the input, and make sure the amplitude is uh, 100. 
And now, well, nothing's happening because this isn't being reset every single time the kick hits. Um, <clears throat> but the way we can make it do that is using the velocity tracker. So we take that. So the velocity tracker uh, takes the velocity of the note, not the not the audio, but the note. So uh, that's this little number here. So the ones with no number next to it is just for the velocity. But here I've set a velocity of two. Let's just say disable the ghost track. Here I've set a velocity of 20, that is hex 20. Uh, and so this velocity tracker will uh, take that and send it out as a signal. So you actually want to invert this. And the reason why is so uh, when the velocity is the, ma the maximum it can be, the uh, envelope starts from the zero point, the lowest it can go. And uh, once the velocity is lower, it'll start from further up. And that effect is just effectively just acts as, you know, a weaker sidechain when the velocity is lower. And that's really useful. So we'll just uh, route this into the LFO and you choose the parameter reset. And now whenever the kick hits, the LFO is reset. And yeah, so I really like using the LFO uh, because you can just completely customize whatever curve you want. You can make it really like exponential. You can make it whatever this is. Yeah, so it's really useful uh, for completely customizing your, your sidechain and to whatever you like. You can also customize how long it takes. Yeah, also if you have like a few, you know, ghost kicks down here, uh, if you completely get rid of these, uh, if you just want like a, a side chain effect, but without the kick, we can just hit right click on this reset button down here and we can insert a track command uh, that activates the side chain, even though the kick is not playing. So we can also manually control when the side chain is hit, which is really cool. Yeah, so I like using the LFO because of this, but you can use whatever method of sidechaining you want. It's really up to you. Uh, there are a bunch of different ways you can do it in Renoise. Uh, but yeah, there are really a few method methods I mi missed. Uh, you can use the compressor as well. Uh, I don't really like using that, but you can do that, I guess. Yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful or something.